morning. Welcome to the weekly update. This pattern right here has filled out. It's truncated. It only went up to like 10,400, which is, that, that just is not good for the chart. It, it just equalizes to a boring market, and that's what we've turned into, honestly. So things have to be recalculated and redone. I'll probably have to trade smaller ranges in the near future if the data keeps coming back like this. But that doesn't really matter until we get under the 8,000 level. Uh, that is going to be key. And as I've stated before, we need to get under that 8,000. That is the most likely target that we're gonna have. So uh, I'm waiting for this. Once that occurs, uh, the dynamics longer term change to being much more positive. So you're gonna see me make some pretty interesting moves uh, in the future after we get under this area. Uh, but that is the highest probability, and I'm just basically waiting for it. Uh, there's nothing to really go on about. Uh, the games being played with the Dow, you know, where they pushed it up here, and then it dropped real quick. When you get a drop like that, that is because of the fact there's no real buyers in the market outside of the Fed and, you know, uh, day traders. And there, there's just nobody really pushing the market outside of the, the, the manipulation that Trump is doing for his re-election campaign. Uh, but who knows how long that's going to last. But uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, things have to be hedged. And the smart money, I've noticed, um, they're definitely moving and you can see it by the volume into the metals, into other alternative assets to go over and protect themselves and, and, and to cash. It's just they have to. Uh, the numbers are stupid. Uh, it's going to have an effect longer term. And uh, stocks are not the place you want to be for future growth. I, there are Goldilockses like Tesla and so forth, but Tesla is like such a, it's uh, such, the only reason it's getting so much volume to the upside is because it is, so, uh, how would you put it? It is one of the few that has real growth story in the future. Everybody else is totally screwed. There are so many industries that have been affected negatively by this that they, nobody wants to put their money there. So they're putting their money in these and they're making these excessive valuations, uh, these excessive valuations of these companies, like the one um, that I told you about, um, what was that, uh, Nikola, right? Uh, the alternative to Tesla because of a pickup truck that's not even a production value item that can be sold. Uh, it is, they're, they've got a market cap that is just absolutely insane. And um, it, that's kind of stuff happening out there. It's kind of scary because when these do go back to normality and they collapse, the downside is gonna be pretty severe more than likely. But uh, again, I, I, you know what I'm doing with Tesla. It's one-to-one. -one. It's just a neutral position. Uh, if it gets above the 1100, I'm going to start selling small amounts of it, like 5%. If it drops back down to 900, I'll buy back that and then keep repeating that until it gets to a, a normalized valuation. Um, and that'll probably happen within a matter of months. Uh, I can't say if it's six or a year, but it's going to... Uh, at some point and usually it, it all of this it, historically happens after the election so after November is when you're likely or even towards you know the September October months you'll start seeing big seismic drops and, and so forth likely because that's when uh, the bigger money re, you know positions themselves and the hedge funds aren't going to want exposure and there's all kinds of factors but it's set up very negatively and um, it ain't gonna be pretty uh, is the only way I could put it uh, statistically everything is showing up as being this way um, gold and silver are the the ones that have the highest upside potential and um, you already know what I'm looking for there on silver this is the one that I'm looking for to get above the 18 19 range and we'll see where we go from there and uh, other than that, I'm just going to wait for, uh, you know, Bitcoin. It's going to give it up at some point. We're going to get that under 8,000 area, and uh, we'll see what happens. But other than that, it's a very boring week. It's nothing to really do, nothing to really see. 
and don't feel comfortable doing anything in this market because of the fact there's nothing really there uh, outside of my CVX short, which is my favorite. I've already taken half when it dropped under the uh, 89 in the, you know, this area right here, the low 89 area. And um, that's basically it. the next move I'll be looking for to get under that 80 into the 79 area. Very clear trade that I have on here and um, we'll see we'll see what happens but uh, stay tuned for next week that's all I can say and I will talk to you again soon